Millions of gallons of wastewater that recently spilled from a northern Minnesota power plant contained a hazardous substance known as coal ash. Well, now Five Investigates has learned the state warned that plant months earlier after a series of previous spills. This latest leak happened in mid-July at Minnesota Power's Boswell facility in Cohasset into a lake near beds of native wild rice. Tonight, investigative reporter Ryan Ray shows us the growing concerns about long-term impacts and how the utility is responding. That's where the leak originated from. I want transparency. That's all I want. I've been racing since I was 12 years old. It's our way of life. It was a disaster waiting to happen. So would you eat the rice here? The morning view at this lakefront property never gets old for Aaron Bielke. Absolutely one of the best lakes in Minnesota, in my opinion. He and his family moved to Grand Rapids five years ago. Fourth of July is the best for lake recreation here. And it's easy to see why. This popular chain of lakes is known for boating, fishing, and harvesting wild rice. But all of it happens in the shadows of one of Minnesota's largest coal power plants, a plant that just had its largest spill ever. When you look at this, we're as close as we can get. Yeah. What, what goes through your mind? Um, what's going on? <laughs> What's going on is a major cleanup operation. In mid-July, Minnesota Power reported that a broken pipe underground was leaking wastewater tainted with coal ash. That's the dangerous byproduct from burning coal. You may not have heard of coal ash, but in other parts of the country, it has become a top concern for people living near coal power plants in Tennessee, Alabama, Indiana, and elsewhere. As part of our mitigation efforts. Back in Minnesota, the company initially estimated a million gallons of that contaminated water spilled into the ground in Creek that runs into the lakes, but days later said it's more like 5 million gallons, enough to fill roughly eight Olympic swimming pools. I mean, it's a huge difference. And, and how do you how do you misjudge by 5x? That was a little bit concerning to me right away. And Five Investigates has learned this is not the first spill. Through a public records request, we obtained this letter of warning. Minnesota Pollution Control sent to Minnesota Power in April of this year, warning of several violations for a series of previous smaller spills. How do you respond to that? The issues noted on that letter had were not related to this event. Kurt Anderson is the director of environment at Minnesota Power. The facility inspection stated that uh, Boswell was in good working order and well maintained. I mean, I'm looking at 11 spills since 2021. I mean, why did it keep happening? So as a you know highly complex operation, spills do occasionally happen, but we are always focused on preventing and when we can, eliminating the risk of those spills happening. You had 30 days to do a number of things to prevent spills from happening. Months later, a pretty big spill happened. Did you do enough? The, the items listed in that letter, um, we are working on those, but they, didn't, they would not have done anything to prevent this spill. This is unrelated to that letter. We'll learn from this incident as well, and we'll get better as a result. Anderson confirmed to Five Investigates this latest leak went unnoticed for roughly five days back in July. And that's what, where the leak originated from. In the months since, the utility has already excavated contaminated soil and is now pumping out dirty water from the creek. Minnesota Power describes the waste as watered-down coal ash. Anderson says tests so far have only found high levels of sulfate and not toxic metals like mercury or arsenic. Out here you got rice. But for ricers Mike Robinson and Gary Charwood... The damage is already done. This spill has changed their plans this coming harvest season. It does you know, break my heart that, that all this rice is, is not going to be any good. I couldn't harvest it. I wouldn't sell it. I wouldn't use it. You know, it's just... I don't know. It's, 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 it's not good. Robinson and Charwood are members of the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe and frequently rice on Blackwater Lake. This is my clan. It's not only a source of food, but also income. A bag of rice sells for around $20. It's our way of life. It's, it's a long line of history uh, that is a part of who we are. Elevated levels of sulfate near the plant or above the state's standard for wild rice. Minnesota Power says it will continue to test and monitor. They can't undo what, what 
they've done and what they've caused. What do you say to them? Well, I think we share concerns, right? This is not something we wanted to have happen. Right now, we're not seeing any acute impacts, but we know this is gonna be a journey. I'm a ricer myself. This is not what we wanted to have happen. So would you eat the rice here? We'd have to continue to, to evaluate. That's why we do monitoring plans, right? We want to make sure we understand what the impacts are. Whether it's wild rice or just enjoying the lake, there are still concerns about the long-term impact. If not today, what about years to come? Would I go into Blackwater Lake and let my kids swim in it? No. Have they swam in Blackwater Lake before? Absolutely. Minnesota Power says it does not know how long this cleanup will take. That will all depend on a series of tests around the spill site, including in Blackwater Lake. The remediation efforts, they say, will continue until this is all cleaned up. In Cohasset, Ryan Raish, 5 Eyewitness News.